As we learn to build more intelligent and agile computers and robots, we become increasingly aware of the limitations of our own bodies. We also realize that we can combine organic with artificial body parts. Failing hearts supported by pacemakers and artificial pumps have been commonplace. Now, we can surgically augment the hearing of people who are profoundly deaf. We're on the brink of bringing sight to the blind. Computer chips embedded in the brain or retina have enabled some patients to discern patterns of light and even some basic shapes. As this biotechnology is improved, we may even improve upon nature. Theoretically, you can make an eye uh, sensitive to infrared, or see in the dark, or see heat, or see a lot of things that we can't see now. The alliance between brain and computer has limitless applications. Brain waves can be used to turn on a simple switch. Soon, it may be possible to use the power of thought alone to control complicated machinery. NASA scientists are working towards pilots flying aircraft by thought alone. She's controlling the motion of that simulator, performing a task by controlling the EEG activity in her brain. Now, what's interesting is as a person gets good at this, they do tend to think things like, I want to roll to the right, or I want to roll to the left, or I want to acquire this target on the right or on the left. So they do tend to associate thoughts with that, but we're not directly measuring a thought. Occasionally, I might feel frustrated if the cursor doesn't do what I want it to do, but it's just a matter of trying again and eventually it works. So it's less reliable than moving my arm, which I can do perfectly every time I want to do it. But my experience is pretty much the same. It's automatic, it's natural when it works. In forging the partnership between the brain and machines, the most important element is our brain's ability to learn and remember new skills. Scotsman Campbell Aird has one of the world's most advanced bionic arms. Controlled by receptors in the shoulder mount, he uses his muscles to operate his new arm. You have to think in a different way. Um, it may be that the muscles that once controlled your elbow movement, um, you're now using an old thumb movement. The opening and closing of the hand could be the small finger movement. But the arm cannot give him any feedback. It's very difficult to um, apply pressure to certain things. Uh, you have no sensory feedback whatsoever. You just don't know how hard or soft you're pressing, and the results can be crushing. Scientists are looking at implanting terminals inside the brain to allow it to control replacement limbs like this using only the power of thought. Within five years, and maybe ten at the outside, I believe that we will implant one of these devices in the brain of a paralyzed human volunteer, and we will be able to control stimulation of his paralyzed muscles so that his limb moves again, or if it's more desirable for that patient to control movements of his own robot arm. By the year 1000, amputation to prevent infection was commonplace. Replacement limbs were fashioned from wood. By the year 2000, we had created complicated bionic limbs. Machines could replicate the functions of the heart, liver and kidneys. By the year 3000, we could create mechanical bodies that are superior to our own. Cyborgs might live side by side with humans.